What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the East vs. West podcast with me, your host, Anthony, and... Eddie from Eddie Tainment. And we have a very special guest on the show today. Uh, from All the way from Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, in the East Coast, in Eddie's backyard. Um, we have Miss Tasha on the, uh, on the podcast talking about her time over at Bush Gardens. I'm going to let Eddie talk a little bit more about what she does and who she is. That way... Uh, you know, you can get a little insight before the podcast starts and go for it, Eddie. Yep. Awesome. So, yeah, guys, over here on the East Coast, we have uh, we have Bush Gardens in two different states. We have it in Florida, Tampa, Florida, and then we have it in Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. I have the pleasure of living near the Bush Gardens, Williamsburg location. So Howl Scream is an event that comes every single year, one of our uh, like best hot events locally. And we are going to be able to interview our first, first Bush Gardens, Williamsburg uh, actress and her her character is Mary Go Round, which is actually one of the staple characters at Sideshow Square. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the video. All righty, guys, welcome back to another podcast. We are on the East versus West podcast, the only podcast where you could get your dose of both coasts. Uh, I am here with my co host Anthony Zaragoza from the Knights of Horror. Um, Anthony, hit me up. What's going on? Yeah. Hey. Uh. And then uh, I myself am Eddie Tainment from, or well, I'm Eddie from Eddie Tainment. Um, so we got that that dose of both coasts with the East and West. Uh, typically, we do uh, Halloween Horror Nights coverage. We mix it up occasionally, and today we're we're mixing it up with somebody really cool, somebody from a local event here in Northern Virginia, and that event is Howl Scream. Uh, we got one of the actresses from. Howl Scream, Tasha, to join us today. Tasha, why don't you let us know a little bit about your character over at Howl Scream? Well, um, in 2016, I got put into the role of Mary Garound in Sideshow Square, which is a scare zone. And um, she's, she's rather interesting. She sort of is a mix between a doll and a clown. Um, sometimes she's gory, sometimes she's not. Um, but she's not somebody you really want to mess with either. Because she likes to play games and is very good at it. So I have a lot of fun with her. Definitely. So, I, it, it's she, interesting. And I, I, I know you may not know this, but it, you're pretty iconic in that scare zone. Yay! Yeah, like... <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we're a team. We're, we really are a team. We're a family. Especially, like, last year's cast. We are thick as thieves. We are, we are definitely keeping our ringmistress um, with her hands full. We, we can come up with some pretty elaborate jokes and pranks, and we always keep it interesting. Nice. So, and so. like I said, you're pretty iconic because I've always noticed you and your character walking around, and you're you're kind of like, you're, you're like a Sour Patch Kid. You're sweet and sour at the same time. You come off as like this sweet, nice character sometimes, and then bam, you catch somebody and you'll turn around real fast and scare them. <laughs> And what I wanted to ask was, has anybody noticed me at the parks? Yes, yeah, yes. A lot of times we know who the vloggers are. Um, okay. I didn't my first year. My first year, you got me dead to right. You got me. I didn't know who you are. Um, but last year, um, I was much more comfortable in my role. I knew her backstory. I knew what to expect. Um, and I knew who to watch out for. And, and primarily, I try to avoid the cameras as much as possible um, because you never know if, if they're a vlogger or if they're just somebody wanting videos at the park. It to have a camera like up in your face, you can't hide. I mean, it's hard for me to hide with my costume as it is, but if I get into a place that I can hide, it doesn't help me to get the scares. So, yeah. it I we all do know who you are. There's there's multiple <laughs> vloggers that we know by sight. And then there's new and up and coming ones that we have no clue. And then all of a sudden it's like, we're seeing it on social media. Like, we're like, who's this? Did you see this? Did you see that? And our, and our message thread within us, it, it goes crazy. Cause we're like, I didn't see that. You know, they got pictures of us or they got video of us. We're like, when was that? And we, yeah. it, it's hard, it, especially on a really busy night to catch all of you. But yeah, we do know you. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I was not aware. I did see a few times a couple of the actors would comment on my videos, but I wasn't sure how aware people were 
of Eddie Tainman. I guess I, I, I'm growing slowly, so that's exciting to know that people do recognize me a little bit more now. But um, I don't know so, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, though, Eddie, because you know that that means they can just all team up on you now. Hey, that's cool. That that'll make for some good content. And there's <laughs> definitely been times when they've caught, they've scared me while I'm holding my camera. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, we're well, gonna start off. I think I think you walk. Well, I think you walk through. You were trying to like chase me, and because you're like she keeps moving, I can't get her, and it's like <laughs> that's, that's what I do. I, I'm constantly moving, and it's funny. Yeah, no, I I definitely try to always get you on on video, and I that that's the funny thing. This is before you and I had ever had a conversation. I just knew you were that iconic person. Do you do you keep the the actual like mask? No, no, that's all. Oh. Um, the mask is the mask and costume is Bush Gardens property. Gotcha. Um, even my makeup design is Bush Gardens property. Um, so no, unfortunately not, because um, that'd be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you said 2016 was your first year, right? Nope, 2018 was my first. Was my first. 2018. Um, okay. And it, yeah, uh, sideshow and circo um, were created. And revealed in 2016. That's when SciShow and Circo arrived to town, per se. Um, gotcha. I jumped on board in 2018, um, and I'm the original and the one and only Mary. I'm <laughs> yes, the only only scare scare actress, scare squad that has, has played Mary. The uh, of course the birth of an icon, right there. It was. They didn't. Even I know hope it. so because she is so fun. She's so fun. Um, and I'm the all I'm the oldest person in Sideshow Square, and they are just like, oh wow! And you sort of play like one of the younger younger uh, characters, so it's it's funny. Right? Yeah, you. I I would have guessed, watching you act, that you were like 15 or something, really like a young girl in like high school. Um, <laughs> the the character that you that you play when you watch her walk around has uh, like a childish like walk. You know, sometimes you have like your umbrella too, you know, and you're like twirling it and you're like looking around. Um, so I, when when I finally like met you, I was like, oh, look, that's awesome. And then I remember you were talking about your son and stuff like that. So I was like, I would have never thunk it. But um, one thing oh, I, I didn't want to. That's the baby. That's the baby? I have older ones. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have, I have, uh, I have four kids that are in their 20s. No way. Well, congratulations and good for you. That's yeah, right. awesome. You look great for your age, too. So I, I, I think you still look 15, even without the costume. So just just uh, to let you know. But um, yeah. Hey, so I, I wanted to ask you uh, before we get into like the back and forth questioning, because we're going to go ahead and ask you some questions that we've thought up. Um, tell us a little bit about the Bush Gardens um, audition how, how does that go down for you? If you're able to share what you can share, of course, uh, how'd that go down for you? How'd you decide to audition? Um, how'd that come about? Um, are you also a horror fan to begin with? Go ahead. I'll give you the floor. Um, to begin with, I love horror movies. Um, it was funny because when the original Nightmare Before Elm Street came out, um, I had just got a waterbed scared <laughs> the daylights out of me. Um, <laughs> I didn't sleep in it. I slept on the floor for the first two weeks I owned it, and it was a birthday gift. I couldn't um, after seeing that. But I, I love the horror films. Um, and I've always, you know, since like 92, 93, I've been in this area. And so I when they, they started doing Bush Gardens, it was pretty cool. Um, I didn't get a chance to, to really go because I had smaller kids. And at that time, it really was not – a good idea um so in 2016 my best friend was in corner and she's like i'm having such a blast i want to i want to do this again you need to come with because i've always done like her yard haunts which were usually you think yard haunts and there's you're thinking small oh no when she was living in in new york it was like we had 1500 people come through wow. in a matter of three and a half hours so wow it was huge and we, we collected for um, the local food bank and stuff, and that was your entrance fee to get in and see all of our all of our characters. Um, so in 18, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. I have everything in, in place. I have, you know, 
all, all the things that I want to do already done for the, for the year. I really want to do this. And my husband was like, yep, go for it. And so I went to, went online, filled out the application, um, picked out an audition time and day and showed up for the audition and had a blast, had a blast. Um, and you go to these things and you, you're scared. You don't know what to expect. You don't know if you have to really act or, or what. And it, it was more fun and just goofing off than anything else. And a lot of it to me was like, they were trying to figure out how I moved and how outgoing I was, how responsible I was, how I can read people. And by the end of it, you, you come out of the audition and go, oh God, I hope I got hired. I hope I got mm -hmm. hired. And then you wait and you have to wait for that call back. And when you get that call, um, you don't know necessarily that that's, you know, Bush Gardens calling you. It's just a random number. And yeah. so I was excited, went through all of the, the processes and, you know, I didn't even know until probably three weeks before um, Hallow's Scream opened, what character I had, where I was actually at, because I was a newbie. I didn't know call centers. I didn't know what they meant. I didn't know where they were located. Um, so it, it was an adventure. Uh, a lot of trying to weave your way around things and figure things out, but I had such a blast. So that's, that's, that's awesome. about all there is. I mean, every, every audition is different. And since then, you haven't had to audition again. Now you're kind of like that fixated role, right? Oh, no. You have to go to audition every year. Um, okay. The only nice thing is I get, I get to go to and be part of the rehire or the veteran scare squad auditions. So we still have fun. It's still the same process. Um, it, you never know. I could be replaced next year as Mary. Uh, you, you just don't know. You don't know if you were in a one role one year, you could move to a different role the next year. I've been fortunate and I've stuck being Mary. I love being Mary. I can't imagine being anywhere else. I really can't. It's going to be hard when when Sideshow and Circo move on to another place. So. Oh, well, let, let's hope it's no time soon and we're able to enjoy it for a little bit longer. Um, all right, cool. So thank you so much for telling us about that. I was actually really interested about how the process would be and if there would be like any like significant differences between between like uh, Bush Gardens and some of the larger haunts. But I guess it goes with it should go without saying that the, it's a similar process on on the the hiring like uh, like a Universal Studios or something like that. It sounds very right. similar. Um, so, hey, uh, Anthony, I'm going to let you jump on in and mm -hmm. uh, we, we prepare some questions for you. So. Take it away, Anthony. I'm excited. I get to. I, I always. I always love it when I get to interview someone new, especially to a haunt that I've actually never been to because I'm over here on the West Coast. But it's something that I definitely want to check out because I see Eddie cover it all the time, and it, it looks much like how you guys have Bush Gardens over there. That looks like not scary farm over here for us. Um, so uh, yeah, I see a lot of similarities with this, and I like the the whole uh, setup that they do, of course, with uh, scare zones and, and the mazes, much like how Knotts does. Um, uh, so going back to that, to that, uh, you know, after auditioning year after year, do the nerves kind of go down for you, or do do you still feel nervous every time you go in? I don't know. Now, um, now it's more of like a reunion um, right. because usually the the veteran or the rehire auditions, you see, you, you see all the scare squad, you see people that you have worked, you know, the last event with um and we do we get a bond we have our favorites we have our clicks um and we grow our family and especially this this last year um sideshow was was definitely thick as thieves we didn't start out that way but by the end of the first weekend our all of our personalities just clicked um we had had multiple you know people scares we were able to take and watch after everybody's safety um, and we were, we were a family and this, this whole coronavirus stuff is really killing us because we don't get to see each other except for when we do zoom or, you know, on Facebook calls or whatever, right. because this is the time that we're used to already being together right. and, and seeing each other on a regular basis. And we are, I mean, 
it's my extended family, and I miss them and love them to death. Can't, don't want, want to ever be without them. Right. No, I completely agree. I hear that a lot too when uh, when I interview people from Knots. Is that basically the entire time the the event goes on, it's like an extended family, and before you know, at the snap of your fingers, the event's over, and you guys are all like really sad, and and you miss each other. And I know a lot. Um, you know. Earlier in the year, I know a lot of us, uh, you know, both fans and, and performers, we would get together and, and go to, like, uh, concerts, or we would just, you know, hang out and, and just talk and, and just catch up and, and really keep that connection going. So that was one of the things that I remember uh, earlier in the year that I enjoyed, is that even though the haunt uh, is over, you get to reminisce and talk how much you're going to, you miss it and can't wait for the next year. And I, I think hearing from what you just told me is the exact same thing is like, you guys are a family and you know, you, you guys miss each other and, and you guys really want to be together. Sadly, this pandemic this year has been kind of holding that back for everyone, which really sucks. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it's still cool that you guys are still finding ways to, to talk with each other and stick with each other. Yeah. So, yeah. Tosh, I'm going to jump in and ask you the next question. So um, I, I know your character, and I know several, like, returning characters, but how, how many characters do they actually have that are, like, named characters like Mary go Um, All of us have names. Um, some of us have named ourselves. Um, I didn't even know how I got names until I seen um, a banner in Circo in 16, um, one of the texts is like, come on, I need to get a picture of you beside your banner. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you've got a banner. He's like, just come here. And that was when I knew how my name came about. I mean, I knew logically because of the parasol and how the parasol is um, designed and decorated and how my, my costume is. It sort of made sense why, why it's merry-go-round. But um, Sometimes you come in and you don't have it. You have a costume, but you don't have the character's name. Um, Ring Mistress is Lilith. Um, love, 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 love me some some Ring Mistress. Um, it was really crazy because one of the Smash Brothers from Sixteen uh, transformed into Jeffrey, um, the, the the crazy cousin of the Ring Mistress and the Ring Master from Circo. Um, and last year. His costume actually matched mine almost identical. So we had some people that really loved catching us together. I love me some, I love me some Jeffrey. Sean is, Sean's fantastic. He is my partner in crime. We, uh, in fact, they even paired us up when they, they swapped and mixed up things um, on the Wednesdays and Thursday nights that they yeah. put us out of our scare zone in the mazes. Um, Jeffrey and I were paired up together. And right. it was a blast. Um, we had, in 19, we had cotton candy. Um, and she had hair that was cotton candy and was always trying to, to give everybody nice sweets off of a tray. We had lolly, love me some lolly. Um, and she had a lollipop that was a saw blade. Um, oh. Sweet. <laughs> turned around. <laughs> and she only is like maybe five two five three, so um, she can really get up, get get to you, and you won't even notice if, if you're a taller person like I am. Um, I'm five nine, so I can look out over the crowd, but but Lolly can sort of like weave her way through things and get you blindsided. Nice. And then we had Happy J, which was one of our clowns. And we had Mumbles, which was the other clown. And then we had Hector, who was our Sailor Boy clown that was always carrying around a knife. And we had Grasshopper, which is our um, not so graceful knife thrower <laughs> that, you know, was very, very quick. He would speed through the, the territory and you would never even see him coming up on you that's how quick he was this one minute he could be standing beside me and the next minute he's like at the end of the territory and we're like where did he go and <laughs> then all of a sudden we hear the ah and it's like okay we know where he got <laughs> and then we have the twins we had the twin twins that had um two faces i don't know if, if you got to see them um but they would literally come up to you and go you know 
you like my face? Am I pretty? Am I pretty? <laughs> and they all of a sudden she pull off their face and uh, the mask underneath uh, was was gory. And uh, that was that was Wiccan Wiccan Manra. So I mean, we just had a really good good group, and we had a fortune teller, and uh, we tried to. That was our that was our real baby of of our crew last year was our fortune teller um her first year um and she she learned a lot learned a lot that we we had to sort of keep her sort of away people do they get rough in, in our area especially but right. she was she, she definitely came up came into into her role by the end of the season so but it's a great great group of people to work with nice and then how about the the other scare zones how, how much do you guys interact because I know you got like uh, Axe Alley and uh, just the, what is it? The Jester's Court? No. Uh, uh, Fool's Court. Fool's Court. We have, Fool's Court you have Axe Alley, Justice. you have Fool's Court, mm-hmm. you have Vampire Point, you have Ripper Row, you have Garden of Souls. Um, I think that's all of them. Off the I think of my that's head. it. Yeah, but, yeah. And, okay. and, uh, um, believe it or not, we don't we don't really interact with them. Um, in two years, I've only been t- into another territory once, and that was on a th- Thursday night. We got pulled from um, Frostbite to cover Fool's Court. It was early on. It was cold. It was rainy. Um, and Fool's Court you know, had some people that weren't able to come into work or had gotten sick or weren't feeling feeling all that great. So. You know, for everybody's safety, they just stayed home. And so they pulled some of Sideshow out of a maze to pull us into Fool's Court. And we were only in Fool's Court maybe an hour and a half, two hours. And gotcha. I mean, it was okay, but it's not home. I mean, yeah. I still, even now, um, I walk into Festa Italia in that, that area, that's home. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be decorated. I miss my boxes. We all miss, miss our seeing our boxes um, <laughs> yeah. we get the come boxes up in the center, but that's home. I mean, you spend so much time there and you walk so much of it for hours upon hours. It's, it gets like home. So yeah. it, it definitely was interesting. Yeah. And Bush gardens, so. Williamsburg, just in general, for those who haven't been there, like Anthony, it's, it's huge. So I could imagine that the different scare zones don't get a lot of, of opportunity to cross past outside of maybe like when you guys are preparing. But we do, we do get to interact with hacks with hack pack. Um, they hack pack comes in and chases us out of square once a night. And then we come back and, and take over square. Um, so that's, that's a blast. Once you figure out the logistics of it, um, we have a blast with that because that's the only time we get to interact with, with other, with other areas. Oh, I've I've never had an opportunity of catching that. I need to catch that next time. You you missed it, Eddie. Where you, you been? I don't know. I feel like a newbie. <laughs> Hack Pack is Hack Pack has has located Wendy. They located Wendy, and so so you did. You missed something. It's it's a blast to watch. Um, my best friend is in Hack Pack, so when I when we go to take back over our square. She and I will go nose to nose, mm-hmm. and it, it's it's very entertaining from what I keep getting told from everybody that just to watch because they literally think like she's gonna get me with a chainsaw, <laughs> and I mean we come barreling into square, and she's right there with a the chainsaw whipping her chainsaw around, and oh, we will get literally nose to nose, but we have a blast, and you know we we've done it so many times that we feel comfortable enough with it. I trust her, and. You know, we just have a good time taking over Square, and you know, if you can't have fun, why do it? I'm so mad that I've missed this, and mostly when I when I consider myself like a veteran of the event. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Come on, Anthony. Anthony. And, it, and it's never the same time of the day. Interesting. It's never at the same time. All right, Anthony, you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I love hearing these stories because, um, yeah, I mean. Like out here, they have like rituals. Same here, same same as she said. Like a lot of people, um, 
you know, they, they never interact with their scare zones, and, and they, you know, they always have a competition to see who can be the best scare zone, and I, it's like a little friendly competition, but I like hearing these stories, because, like, now it's just, like, I now it makes me want to go to the event even more, and fly out there and check it out, because uh, it sounds a lot like Not Scary Farm, which I'm a huge fan of, and, you know, this is another haunt that I would just love to check out and, and see. Uh... One of the things I, I always ask to uh, scare actors is, uh, is there anything that you guys do on a, on a night to, to kind of hype your guys' selves up and prepare yourselves, whether it be like listening to music or kind of just sitting alone and, and kind of getting in character or like, you know, read a book? I don't know. Is there something that you guys do every night to get into that state to just hype each other up? Um, I mean, we're all a pretty tight-knit family. So, you know, from the time I get makeup done, I am pretty much out of sight until I come out in the square. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting there with the rest of us. So we just sit there and we goof off. We play, we play cards. We do warm ups. Um, we get together. You know, do, do do your regular. You know, stay safe, safe scares, um, and get in costume. And then they they release us. So I guess probably for us, the hype up is when they open up Circo's door, wooden doors to open up the circus and we do our parade out every night. Um, but you know, we, we just enjoy being all together. So we, we sit there and goof off pretty much most of the night anyways. So our energy level is very rarely ever down. And, uh, another one too is, uh, I, I've heard a lot of, uh, scare actors tell me that, uh, the, the funniest thing to do to each other is, um, try to make other characters, uh, in a way, break for a split second by scaring, getting a scare. Have you ever gotten a scare? Or has anybody ever, like any of your um, your colleagues, ever scared someone, and then you just you, you just can't help it, but to just kind of maybe burst out real quick and then kind of get back into character? Oh yeah, um, Jeffrey. In fact, got me when one night when we were in Frostbite. Um, the first night we got placed, we got placed in um, a dungeon. Right. Or a dragon, a dragon bone room, and we're like, okay, I pretty, my costume pretty much glows under <laughs> under black light, so it's hard to hide me. There's yeah. nowhere to hide me with this big poofy, you know, like poodle style skirt, and and I'm like glowing. Um, and his costume is pretty much the same. So we're, you know, for the first five or ten minutes, we were trying to figure out what worked, what what didn't, and then all of a sudden I'm like, hey, watch this. And I laid down on the dragon bones. And I can control my breathing really, really well. I mean, really well. I, I scooped the dive. And so I was laying down on the bones. And all of a sudden, the group came through. And they're looking. And they're like, oh, my God. You know, what, what is that? Is, is that is that an actual person? No, no. And so they would get up real close to me. And he would pop out. And he'd be like, dead clown for sale. And you see everybody just jump. And... I just looked at him when they when the group went by. I'm like, really? You're trying to sell me now? And he's like, it works. And I mean, we do. We have fun like that. But he lost it when we had um, a group of police officers and security that came through um, on their breaks. They wanted to see because we were out of our area. Right. And uh, one of the one of the cops went to touch me, and I stayed still, stayed still. And I don't I, with my contacts. I don't have to blink. So I'm just standing there, and um, she gets almost to my nose. I'm like, don't touch me. And she, like, she's like, oh. <laughs> I just want pee. And, and he, he, he lost it. No more good. He's like, I didn't know how else to respond because I couldn't even get a scare on them because I was laughing too hard. And I'm like, oops. You know? and, and that was just my character. And, and Eddie can tell you, you never knew what was going to come out of my mouth. Because one minute, it was like, oh, you want to play? Come on, let's play. Yeah. And then the next minute it's like, Oops. and then I'll, I'll mess with the with the high schoolers because the high schoolers and middle schoolers oh. they tend to want to pick your nerves. And so we would play rock paper scissors games with them and stuff like that. And then you know we always have our own little twists. And they would be like, oh, I mean, bye bye, see you. You got beat by a girl. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh. so I mean we have fun. But yeah. it, but it's always it's it's never boring because you always will have at least one person that night that you can get really bad and especially being a clown I mean 
I never realized how many people were scared of clowns. Never. And clowns and dolls. So yeah. it does. And one, one thing, Tasha, that you do really great is you're really good at being aware of your surroundings. Because there's been a couple times I've been heading to like Cirque du Sinistro and you're in front of me, but you're not looking at me. But you're well aware that I'm behind you. And I'm like filming and talking. I think the, the last year you actually got me when I was walking to Cirque du Sinistro. And you're just walking and I'm filming the back of your head with, and you're following somebody else. And then you turned around and got me and I was like, oh, shoot. You like, and you've done that to me like probably at least twice. <laughs> So you're, you're, well, you have a, you have yeah, um, you, you just have that choice, um, especially with a prop that that's, that's that big. Um, again, I'm not sure, but when you have to have, have a parasol, like stay in motion, um, you do, you, you have to be aware of, of everything and you can tell you, we, we listen a lot. We, um, we know what sounds are normal and, you know, especially with, the pavement and the cobblestone that we have in that area, we know when we can hear people stepping and giggling or, you know, even a whispering, we can hear that. that. That's how we, you know, sort of pick our marks is by observing things out and about. So, yeah, I, I've gotten you a couple times and we were, I was like, oh, yes, yes. You know, because that's <laughs> big deals for us. Cause you, you go and tour all over and go to all of these venues and events. And so to, to get the people that go to all these places and stuff to get them, that's like, yes, we, 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 we've made, we've succeeded. We've made yeah. that extra prize. So it's always fun. And, and people like myself and Anthony really appreciate it when you guys could actually get us because we go so often that we almost become a little bit immune to it. So when people get us, I'm like, yes, they did a great job. Like I, it's one of those things where I'm not like, oh, damn. Stop it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, do it again. <laughs> but um, so well, from so uh, I laugh. I took, yeah. at your walkthrough, you were saying how Circo was it was getting so routine for you. And then when you came out, you're like, I can't believe it. I got I got caught in the, in the mannequin room, I think it was. Yeah. And then later on that night, I was going home and my my 24 year old son was in, in, in the mannequin room. And he's like, yeah, he goes, I know who you're talking about. He goes, I got him. And I'm like, yes. Yes. And he was, he was like, Seriously, mom? <laughs> yeah. So that want, was great. I just want I, I just want to let one. you know that next the next time he goes, you know, get a picture of his face, you know, he's got a big target painted on his back now. So that's gonna make for some quality content right there. I I would love that. If I if I if I could actually tell that I'm a target, that'd be awesome. I'll, I'll <laughs> everybody's give you the out GoPro to get me. and everything. <laughs> So uh, well, that Tasha, might be to be a <laughs> Yeah. Hey, if you could do it, that'd be awesome. That that would be a great video, entertaining for everybody, myself and those watching who see me getting scared all the damn time. <laughs> <laughs> so Tasha, um, from a, a fan perspective, how often do you get to visit the event when you're acting? I don't. I from the from the from the day that it opens as number preview. I work every single night. Um, if by chance we open this year, which we've all, we're all like still crossing our fingers. Um, but this year would be the only year that I have, uh, I would be taking one night off and that's for uh, a get together. That's like a t every 10 year get together with some people that I've grown up with and have seen me, seen me, you know, with my kids as little. So other than that, I'm there every night from open to close. So, because I enjoy it, you know. Yeah. I have a lot of fun. And and that that seems to be the case, not not just at Bush Gardens. You're actually the, the first um, scare actor that we've been able to interview at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. So thank you for being our first. Um, but for most of the haunts that like we interview people for, they typically don't get much time to actually experience the event outside of the acting portion. Um, so it's always interesting to, to see that. And I, I know that for, for some of them, they became actors because they were fans before ever acting there. Um, now- well, we can have our chance to take days off. I just choose okay. not to. I okay. choose to work it uh, from, from you know, start to finish. And part of that is because I am, I am a big, big, big widely known character. 
So, yeah. and I miss my family. I, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. You know, come like 11 o'clock at night, I'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. So. Yeah. There, there's you and there's a gentleman at uh, Vampire Point that I'm very familiar with. I, I like what's his name? I, his nickname's L.A. L.A. So I know who you're talking about. His name is, his, his real name is Sydney. So, yeah. Gotcha. I love, love him to death. Love me in L.A. He, he is great. He has yes. a great sense of humor. Is great at his job. Um, is great with the, the kids and adults. Like, yep. alike. I mean, he really is. Um, and he has such a blast with it, too. So, yeah, he, he's been there every year that I've gone. And he's always right around the same area, and his acting is amazing. I, I love him. I've caught him several times on camera, just like you. I, I would say um, I look forward to – so I, I don't want to offend any of the other actors out there. I look forward to noticing more of you guys, but the two that I've noticed the most are you and Sydney. Does his character have a name? Is it um, LA? I don't know. I mean, he's the ancient vampire in Vampire Point. That's all I know. Um because like I said, I don't I don't get to go into other territories because gotcha. Mary Brown is in is in a sideshow. Um, I only know what I know because I had makeup with him the first year, and um, I've seen him a couple times during for makeup last year. But I mean, he's great. I love him to pieces. He he is such an outgoing and positive person all the time, and to see him interact, um, he interacts with my six year old. And I've seen videos of that. And then I've seen him interact with like my god kids who are, you know, in high school and it's like, whoa. Um, but he is, he's he's just great. He's great on and off the job. Yeah. No, he, he does a, a really good job. And if you pay attention, most of the like vloggers that go, it's like it's like you guys are magnets for cameras. So both of you guys I've seen not just on my videos, but several other vloggers videos you guys are always getting captured for some for some reason you guys are just that great that they they always seem to be attracted I to you guys um so i really appreciate it anthony I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the current event of the of the park and but before we do that did you want to ask did you have any other questions in line oh yeah one thing i always ask characters because i'm always curious too is uh you know there's all these other events in the world that go on of course with uh scare acting so if you could for one night go to any other event to scare act for a night uh where would you go and why i love that question <laughs> just because there there is such there's a family feeling about Bush Gardens, um, but there's also like a rivalry between right. like Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, and Tampa. Right. I would have to say Tampa just to see behind enemy lines per se, um, <laughs> to see what see what they do and what all the hype is about their park compared to ours. Um, right. That probably would be my my choice um, because we do we share. A lot uh, and slip swap a lot of mazes and ideas, you know, between the parks. So I think it'd be really cool to sort of go down into 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 you know Tampa's territory and uh, then mess around, play around, see if there's any difference. Um, a lot of things are, are going to be the same, you know, whether it's you know Bush Gardens, Halloween Horror Nights, not not scary, you know, any of the venues, you're going to see um, some of the same. Similar things that the actors are going to go through. Um, you're going to have the aggressive people that um, are just trying to mess with you, or you know, actually are scared, um, or just want to you know go go through and just terrorize everybody. So you're going to have some of those things that are common, but then you're going to have the, the different things. You know, not everybody's cup of tea. So. So you would the, like, the, yeah, so I would definitely Tampa be, one be interested to to see uh, what's going down down there to see uh, who's got the best. I'm gonna go the one you guys work at's probably the better one in my opinion. I so I haven't been able to be go to both, but I've always heard about this like this rivalry within the the Tampa and the Williamsburg parks. One thing I'll tell you though, looking at both parks, the the Williamsburg park is definitely the more beautiful park that thing is stunning to look at and i've been 
to all the uh, amazing Orlando parks. Williamsburg, that that's how that's like their bread and butter. That that park is amazing just to walk around. You don't even need to like necessarily ride anything. They do have amazing roller coasters, but the park itself is stunning to look at. Yeah, yeah. World's all most right. beautiful park. It is, oh, and yes, I, it is. I think officially, yeah, it actually has that. Yes, it's won that award. Um, yes, so <laughs> multiple years. Yeah. Tasha, have you, have you had a chance to, right, right now the, the park is technically closed, but they're doing special events. The, um, it, I think it's the Coasters and Craft Beer is the, the current event. It's a private event by limited tickets and limited access. Have you been able to go? I, I did not go. Um, I opted not to, not to do reservations. I have a membership, um, as does everybody in my household. Um, but my six-year-old is autistic, and um, we didn't want to take him. Um, he has sensor issues, so to do that and wear a mask, he does fairly well with it. Um, but you have people that get ugly about kids not wearing masks, and some of them understand and some of them don't. Um, so it really wasn't beneficial. And he is a he, he's a sideshow square junkie. He likes the arcade that's right off of there um that that's some of his common areas so with that area being currently closed for this special event and some of his other little vices not being available um we opted not to um they have added um i guess another weekend to it so yeah. my husband and i have talked about maybe going by ourselves um but it's it's hard that's his that's his home away from home he he knows um, a lot of people at the park. Um, they love him to pieces, but that, that's like a second home. He feels comfortable there. And to do that without taking him sort of this like, mm -hmm. oh. but definitely, you know, they're talking about doing more, more events um, depending on the outcome of this. So it's possible. We're still hoping that, that they'll open us up um, with a higher max so that more people can, can go back to work and, so that we can get more guests in and sort of try and get back to, to normal. All right. Everybody yeah. misses the park. That's a big yeah. deal. Yeah, the, the, the biggest, I, I, well, I guess not the biggest issue, but the, the limitations around only a thousand people being able to come into the, into the park at the moment are very restricting, um, but understandably so. And I, yeah. I'm so sorry that he has, he's not able to, to go at the moment. I, you've told me about how much he loves it. And we had that conversation in the past. So Hopefully he's able to go soon and all this craziness calms down. Yeah. I may be going this coming weekend. Um, fingers crossed. I haven't been able to get the pass holder reservation though. It, yeah. yeah. Right now. I mean, only... And it's because, because of the limitations that our governor is putting on uh, um, Bush Gardens. Um, unfortunately, it's a thousand max capacity or you know, a 50 percent max capacity or up to a thousand whichever is less so um bush gardens hands are tied it's not that any of us don't want to go back to work or open the park we all we all would love to go uh, back to back to work um back to the park and all that stuff but we have to wait and see we have you know all depends on the numbers it's a numbers game right now unfortunately yeah. Um, but you're not the only one that that uh, that is having this same issue. Yeah. So. Um, I hope you can see it though. Yeah, they they've been doing a great job. Everything I hear from all the like Facebook groups that I'm in, they everybody's been raving about how good of a job Williamsburg has been doing with the social distancing and the CDC guidelines. So I'm excited about that. Um, there was even one gentleman on one of the Facebook groups that basically said he was extremely hesitant and one of his friends kind of like pushed him and he was super impressed with how well they were maintaining the parks. So fingers crossed. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm rooting for you guys. Do you, do you work at the parks outside of Howl Scream? Um, no, I um, auditioned for Christmas town, but it was later on in the season. So I didn't get picked up to, to carry on to Christmas Town. Um, I was going to do that again this year too, but um, we're our our future is not being foretold very well right 
now. So we're all in a waiting phase, all crossing yeah. fingers, hoping that they, they at least get, get us open for hollow screen. Um, so it's, it's a waiting game, unfortunately. Yeah. Fingers crossed. So. I'm glad. Uh, I'm really glad things are looking bright on your guys' side because in California, man, <laughs> it is not looking good. <laughs> it's a little tougher on your end. Oh for yeah. Sure. But um, hey, Anthony, did you have any other questions for Tasha before we kind of let uh, her? Honestly, like no. I mean, she's been a, a great guest, and it, it's she really honestly hyped me up even more to really want to attend this event. Uh, and I'm hoping uh, if if things don't work out this year with the event. Um, I'm hoping next year I, I could fly out and, uh, you know, crash with Eddie and, and go to the event and, and come check it out. Cause I would love to, uh, I'd love to, uh, see it firsthand and, and, you know, see, see everybody do their thing. I mean, I'm always new to going to new events and, and from what it sounds like, it sounds like an amazing event. And I've seen footage from Eddie, like I said, and he, he, he's you, you two together just hyped it up for me a lot. So like Thanks. now I, I can't wait to actually check it out. All right, we're gonna have to have you. Or you're well, gonna hold and, to that. <laughs> did Eddie? Did you know that? Because um, you were sitting there talking about you know competitions in between, you know groups in the park and stuff. Dive show got uh, territory of the year last year, and Circo got Maze of the year. So yeah, we had those competitions too. So yeah, you definitely need to come fly fly out and see us. Definitely. Right. Oh, it's on. It's yeah, on the yeah. list. It's, there's the no questions asked. <laughs> before the circus moves to another town yep that's that's like that's like i'm gonna come just because of you like literally that's why i'm coming just to see you and everyone else <laughs> but her first but her Definitely first i'm gonna tell eddie like we need to hunt her down because that's where i that's what i came for <laughs> all right oh, he, so... knows, he knows where i'm at usually. <laughs> yeah usually i'm able to find her Hey, Tasha, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for being our first scare actor from Bush Gardens, Williamsburg's Howl Scream. Um, before we let you go, is there anything that you'd like to say or plug? Um, come out, visit the park, no matter what time of year, we'll have a blast. Um, the employees are, are great. If, if you have, have issues, find somebody, talk to them. Things don't change anywhere, and especially these days, if we don't all communicate. Um, for those for those parents of special needs kids, bring them, bring them. Um, the park is great with special needs kids. Um, they are fantastic. They're accepting. Even during you know hollow scream times, um, they have things for the kids and, and everything. But always remember. Um, to educate, advocate, and accept, no matter what. Um, doesn't doesn't really matter what what problems you have, whether it's disagreements or special needs or disabilities. Accept everybody, love everybody, and have fun. I couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. Yeah. I, and, I, and I love hearing that they're super um, awesome with with special needs kids because uh, not a lot of parks don't open that door to really invite more. And I think more parks should do that. I, I know that the Disney parks do that. They're very welcoming. And um, it's really good to hear Bush Gar Bush Gardens doing that. That really puts a, a really big stamp on their, on their, uh, on their map right there. And I, and I, and I appreciate them for doing that. I think there needs to be more of that in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that positive message, Tasha. I really appreciate that. Um, and thank you again for being our, our first character from Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Howl Scream. Um, guys, that's going to be it for this particular vi video. We had the amazing, stupendous, and every other synonym that means amazing uh, <laughs> merry-go-round actress Tasha on today. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and stay tuned for the next video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a good one. Deuces.